Hey guys, hello, welcome back to NCLEX session. We are now on part 12. We will be discussing medications, mainly frequently seen medications that you'll be dealing with in your day to day, usually hospital based, um, even for some people, nursing homes and home care and different things of that nature. Anything involving you teaching your patient about their medications and you actually administering them and things you need to know uh, whether it's about key things to teach your patients or uh, just things in general that you should be aware of when administering a medication. I have missed you guys. I had a little break and um, I miss you and I am back. And this series, um, obviously we give tons of medication. So this is gonna be uh, part one of um, at least three series. Um, so I can get in your main meds that you um, will be seeing daily in your patient care. Um, I've missed you guys. So don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so I can continue bringing you more information to um, better your career, better your understanding of um, medications, patient care, and everything involving nursing, um, things for uh, medical students, and things for people in general who just care about their overall health. Um, again, Skill Snacks is not just for students, it's for everyone involved in their own health and concerns about their health and their health care, whether it's in the industry um, or just them providing caring for themselves as best they can. Um, so definitely stay tuned to this channel. It's a lot of also positive um, videos too to keep us motivated and focus on what's most important in life. Um, so a lot of that mainly in our shorts um, section. Okay, so let's get on with this and start off with some awesome questions. And these are pretty much, I would say, easy to medium um, level, if you're concerned about that. And as the last two sessions um, that I will provide for this medication, um, in-class review will be more, a little bit, slightly getting a little bit on a difficult side. But for now, let's keep it easy, let's keep it simple. And again, I miss you guys and welcome back. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And for those who do not know me, my name is I'm Professor Diane Anderson and I've been a nurse for quite a while in every field. Um, my Pacific area is critical care, ER, um, ICU, PCU, IMC. But I've also done site nursing, I've done home care, I've done um, occupational health, and different arenas of, of healthcare. I uh, have been in the leadership division in terms of um, CNO, uh, manager, charge nurse, house supervisor, um, and also, um, of course, um, a regular staff nurse that is mainly focused on making sure the doctor's happy, the patient is happy, and the care is up to par. Um, so I've been on both sides of the coin and then I'm still working in the hospital arena as well. Okay, as well as teaching um, students. Okay guys, let's get started. Okay guys, first question. A patient is taking Tylenol regularly. What advice should the nurse provide regarding alcohol consumption? Is it A, avoid alcohol while taking Tylenol? B, Limit alcohol intake to one drink per day. C, take Tylenol with alcohol to enhance its effect. D, drink plenty of water if consuming alcohol with Tylenol. The correct answer is A, consuming alcohol while taking Tylenol can increase the risk of liver damage. Therefore, it's important to advise avoiding alcohol altogether. A patient is prescribed Zantac. What information should the nurse include when educating the patient about this medication? Is it A, take this medication with meals? B, avoid caffeine while on this medication. C, use antacids in conjunction with Zantac for better efficiency. Or D, Report any signs of black tarry stools immediately. The correct answer is D, 
Zantac is a histamine 2 blocker used to treat ulcers and gastroesophageal reflux disease, also called GERD. Educating the patient about signs of gastrointestinal bleeding, such as black tar stools, is essential. A patient reports redness and irritation at the site of lidocaine application. What action should the nurse take first? Is it A, a topical corticosteroid to the area? B, document the findings in the patient's chart? C, wash the affected area thoroughly? Or D, remove the medication and notify the healthcare provider? The correct answer is D. Redness and irritation at the site of lidocaine application could initiate an allergic reaction. Removing the medication and notifying the healthcare provider are crucial steps. A patient on lithium therapy presents with increased thirst and urination. What intervention should the nurse prioritize? Is it A, encourage increased fluid intake? B, notify the healthcare provider immediately. C, monitor the patient's weight daily. Or D, administer additional dose of lithium. The correct answer is B, increased thirst and urination may indicate lithium toxicity. Notifying the healthcare provider promptly is essential to prevent further complications. A patient is prescribed labetalol for hypertension. Which assessment finding should the nurse prioritize before administering this medication? Is it A, blood glucose level? B, respiratory rate? C, blood pressure? Or D, serum potassium level? The correct answer is C. The beta law is a beta blocker used to lower blood pressure. Assessing the patient's blood pressure before administration is crucial to ensure safe medication administration. A patient is prescribed a medication that requires monitoring of serum theophylline levels. What should the nurse advise the patient regarding caffeine intake? Is it A, avoid caffeine while taking this medication? B, limit caffeine intake to one cup per day. C, increase caffeine consumption for better drug absorption. Or D, consume caffeine-containing products as usual. Caffeine can increase the ophelin levels, potentially leading to toxicity. So it's advised to avoid caffeine while on this medication. A patient is prescribed a medication known to have phototoxic effects. What instructions should the nurse provide to the patient? Apply sunscreen with high SPF before medication. Avoid using moisturizer after medication application. Expose the affected area to direct sunlight for short periods. Or D, apply the medication multiple times a day for better efficiency. Applying sunscreen with a high sun protection factor, SPF, can help prevent phototoxic reactions caused by certain medications. A patient is prescribed a medication that requires administration via the intramuscular route, IM. What should the nurse do to reduce the risk of nerve injury during injection? Is it A, use a longer needle? B, insert the needle at a 45 degree angle? C, aspirate before injection? Or D, choose a dorsal gluteal site? Inserting the needle at a 90 degree angle reduces the risk of nerve injury during IM injections. 
So I hope you guys did well with those questions. If you have any particular questions for me or you had some concerns with the rationale or you didn't quite get it, one of one or two questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me at my email, which I have on the screen there. It's skillsnacksyt for YouTube at gmail.com. I'm here for you. And usually I respond within 24 hours. Um, we can either arrange a, um, you email me with your question, then I can answer you. And you can read it at your convenience. Or if you need a one-on-one -on -one via online, um, you can email me um, hours that are good for you, days that are good for you, and I will fit that in with my schedule and help you um, to the best of my ability. So I'm there for you. And again, um, please be there for us. Continue to be there for Skill Stats by liking and subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate your support. That helps us in bringing more information to the public in general about their health and health care and concerns, as well as our students, um, whether nursing or medical. So thank you again for your support. And I miss you guys. And I will be bringing you at least two more sessions relating to medications because we have a lot more meds to go over. And I want to make sure you do well, not only on the exam, but also in your practice in general, certain things that you should always be key in your mind when you're administering certain medications or teaching about the medications to your patients. You have an awesome end of year because soon, you know, our holidays will be coming up, whether it's Hanukkah or Christmas or whatever um, holiday you celebrate in the month of December. And of course, New Year's is right around the corner. So I'm going to wish you guys right now a happy and wonderful, plentiful, educational uh, New Year. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.